I started wanting to be a writer. Mm -hmm. um, I started wanting to be a writer when I was about 14, 15. I didn't really know what exactly, but I think the my father was a big subscriber to the what was then the Nimrod and to this company as it came into being. Probably it wasn't quite in being at that stage. Um, and so I think I gravitated to theatre just because that was what I was most exposed to. Yeah. Uh, but... And we're talking, I'm assuming, late 70s, early 80s, pretty we exciting are talking time theatre, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That, and it was, because I think the Nimrod... Was, I mean, Nimrod Belvoir, they've, it's continued to be a great space, that. And um, I think this, you know, the coming into being of this company, and, mm. yeah, mm. it was a good, great time. Um, so I kind of... Uh, the first sort of dabblings I had with it were at Shopfront Theatre for Young People, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which I think is what it was called. With Errol Bray. With Errol Bray, yeah. who ran yeah. A, a playwrights conference for young people over a weekend, and I went when I was in what was then called fifth form, what's that, year <laughs> 11? Year 11, exactly. Uh, and then I went back again in year 12. And um, so that started to work for me as I wanted to be a writer. And then what I found in doing in being around theatre makers, mm. theatre people, is that actually everyone contributes. Mm. And that really suited my temperament, actually. Mm. Uh, so I got into Suds, Sydney University, mm. uh, and sort of made a show that was kind of cobbled up, was a kind of adaptation, really, of Macbeth. This is, I do remember, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of weird cobbling, and I kind of directed it, but I kind of co-directed it. It was a genuinely kind of group device thing, really, mm. but it, we had the Macbeth the play as a template um, and that led me to VCA mm -hmm. which I, why I chose VCA was because it was such a broad uh, approach to theatre making mm -hmm. I mean you know yourself it was it was really rooted in acting which I think is right mm. but there was a writing course and a directing course and they were aligned I chose to do the directing course but I kind of still did a bit of writing on the side um, but it was a theatre making course in the end, mm. and I think that has really informed my approach as a writer, which has led down the path of adaptations a lot, because mm. that is a, you're specifically making something for a production, you know, with or for a director to make a production. You don't expect it to do anything else. Mm. It doesn't go anywhere else. It's just for them, which I really like about theatre. And this is, if I'm, my memory serves correctly, this sort of... That trajectory began with Marion Potts, is this right? With the with the Moliere's and so on. Yeah, the that the first early 90s. adaptation was with I did a um, Le Bourgeois Gentilhomme, which we renamed the Gentleman's New Clothes, mm. and it kind of had all of those things that I'm I'm really interested in, which is kind of careful, I hope, uh, or certainly constructive use of kind of anachronism, particularly in language, mm. so that you're never comfortable with. The, the period setting you're never kind of mm. thinking oh it's back then or you know mm. it just sort of keeps it alive today and I think that's part of my interest in the adaptation but yeah it is a, it's a dialogue mm. I think playwriting it should be a dialogue with a, mm. with a director in, and with the cast mm. and you know obviously with Hanging Man for instance that I also have ambitions it was we all do to write a to generate a work myself yeah. Yeah. but I it's quite hard I think I find it very hard to I have ideas but for them to get past page 20 is very very hard mm. we interestingly we read a play because we're in the programming cycle we read this play of T.S. Eliot it's called The Cocktail Party which is not really a play mm. great writer obviously mm. yeah clearly <laughs> <laughs> just saying <laughs> but it's not a play and the interesting thing about it is it's three acts and they're all like a start yeah and they pick up the themes and they pick up the characters, but they don't. It doesn't. It hasn't got a real arc in it. Mm. It's just start, starts again, starts again, and that faltering quality, I think, uh, is something about telling a story that's the whole arc. Mm. It's not as easy as people might make it seem. No, no. And having a story with enough fuel in its in its belly mm. to go for you know ninety minutes, hundred minutes is a really particular. Do you find I that? Think, I suppose I, I, you know, rereading re Hanging Man um, recently, it struck me, and maybe incorrectly, but it struck me as a very exposing work. Yeah. For you, very personal. I mean, and I'm yeah. not not no. saying it's biographical in any way, no. but like, no. but, but yeah. it's um, uh, 
but it is you know you you get it like with all good plays you get a strong sense of your soul in it yeah and I'm just wondering how that feels as a writer. In terms oh, I of, love that feeling. Yeah. That's okay. isn't that. But I mean, I, I actually prefer your expression, your your soul. But that's also your voice, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it but goes it's kind, of, it's kind of more intimate. Yes. Even. Yeah. yeah. Well, it should be. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad you say that. I mean, I think that's part of the. That's what you risk. Mm. I, I try and do that with an adaptation as well, mm. and I've been doing it more and more with adaptations. I found a way to. Use someone else's. I mean, God, Shakespeare did it all the time. Yeah. Use someone else's story to say something that's of yeah. deeply of yourself. Yes, it's a very, very, very old trick in theatre, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> I'll just trick in the book. <laughs> Far from the trapdoor. Mm. And the nude scene. Oh, well, <laughs> love a nude scene. There's no nude scene in here. <laughs> that's why it's never been done. You again. see, <laughs> just got to add a little scene in there. We're all good. Um, yes. No, it does. It does. It came from a time. Uh, when I had my life had shifted gear because of Kate's career mm. so I had been exposed to to you know I, I was from a pretty what you'd call a petty bourgeois family mm. like pretty middle class pretty even nothing certainly no no uh, great hardship but no kind of um, sort of international mm. uh, gear and and, and it's quite rarefied air, I imagine, some of uh, yeah. some of the places that you guys travel. Absolutely. And when you first get into it, it's like, wow, this is... It, that struck me as interesting. And the, the kind of space between wanting to create something authentic, mm. which I assume painters want to do, or certainly... I've forgotten the character's name in, in Hanging Man, but that, he is an, an authentic... He's from the gut mm. artist. Mm, mm. Uh um, and the and the kind of art world that that lifts it into the kind of stratosphere monetarily, mm. and then sort of away from that authentic place. Mm. I found that a really interesting tension. Mm. I found an interesting tension watching it in um, Kate's life, mm. which I think she's managed really beautifully. And I found an interesting tension in my own life in that the, the, you know need is a you know necessity is the mother of invention as mm. they say mm. need is a great drive and and if things become sort of smoothed over and padded up and packed in cotton wool it's it's really hard to poke your way through to the place where you where, yeah. you, where you know you need something yeah so that's to me that's part of the exposing yeah uh, it's part of that story but then like you say there's also in the voice in the in the one of the things I got really interested in is um, is a sort of incohate quality that I, I think uh, naturalism is very very beautiful at, mm. at at allowing an audience to sit inside where mm. you've got fragmented space in the mm. sentences and in the thoughts and it's into those cracks that actually the audience kind of flows and puts mm. their own I I think probably get slightly different meanings from each other. Mm. Well, you do this very interesting thing in the text there, you know, where you you quite often bracket the end of a thought and not just, uh, you know, designed not to be spoken, of course, but to to guide the actor, I guess. Yeah. But you you also kind of give maybe sometimes three or four different versions of what that might be. (laughs) It's just sort of interesting to think as a director or an actor... Um, whether I mean, I suppose my my impulse would be that you just do all of them, you know. <laughs> but then, you know, maybe there's also a, a choice thing involved. But it, 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 yeah, that's very pres- present in that. Yeah, yeah, it's very packed with. Yeah, well, with that those. inchoate quality I feel is a is it, it's it's a struggle of mine, hmm. and I'm and a good struggle. I mean, I I don't weep over it, but the sort of inability to get there. Yeah interests me yeah there's a sort of a kind of a, a, a terrible viciousness of it sort of horrible competitiveness I mean horrible in, I mean in a good way obviously yeah. um, that, that exists between the men particularly yeah. in that in that play and I was just wondering if that um, I'm not asking this question to pry in any way but I'm just wondering how that sort of sits in you because um, that was that felt very bare to me that felt very sort of something I could feel something real under it yeah Uh, and um, uh, which is kind of what led me to think wow you do this you write this play and then Robin directs it and you've got a lovely white box and it's opening night and (laughs) do you sit there going oh my god why did I put that in (laughs) you know I'm just curious about that is it Uh, there's sort of two two bits in there Um, how it ends up is so 
fabulous and strange. Mm. And I am very, perhaps too easy going, but no, I don't think you can be too easy going. There's a particular estate we've had dealings with, this is me talking as an artistic director. Mm. And the guy's still alive, and I won't say who it is, but he's not a theatre maker. Mm. He's, he writes these plays, he wants control of the set, he wants control of the cast, yeah. he wants control of... It's, he wants, it's a museum. It's mm. a, it's a piece for a museum mm. already, and the guy's not even dead. Yeah. And I, we've had trouble with those. The dead, like we had a lot of trouble with the Genet estate, and then I think eventually they realised that what Benedict particularly was doing with that production was reinvigorating that play for, yes. for the for this today. This is what's so frustrating. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not too easy going. You've got to let it go where it goes. Mm. So where Robert ended up taking that play allowed me to actually watch it. Mm. Didn't so I don't feel in a funny way I don't feel exposed by that, mm. but. Inside that, the male struggle really interests me. I, mm. I, we did a mysteries here and, and I chose to do the uh, Cain and Abel part of the story. And I, partly I love the, uh, the I don't love, I, I kind of find fascinating the, the, the chosen son and the unchosen son. Yep. I find the conflict between the sons that that means. I mean, it's in Rifle Mind as well. I don't mm. know if you know yeah, that. Yeah, no, it's, it, yeah. And I, it's not in my life. Mm. I mean, mm that I can see, mm. but it is something that is in my life because I do see it in men. There's, they, 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 hi- they make hierarchies much more mm. readily than women. Mm. And much women, more obviously, I think. Perhaps more obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. is a better way to put yeah, it. Yeah, 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 because I think there is a whole other yes, version. There, yeah. absolutely, yeah. there is. Um, much more obviously and therefore more kind of uh, oppressively, yeah. re- you know, yeah, it kind of stops you from growing. It mm. can stop you from growing. Mm. That, another thing, and right from mine, that sort of band that just won't move on, mm. can't move on, because mm. if it moves on, it's not the band. Mm. And that those two brothers, I assume you're talking yeah, about. Really. Yeah, That uh, conflict, I find, because it's the conflict of, like, there's love, but there's also keeping people in their place. Yes. And it's the refusal to kind of move yes. that uh, terrifies me about a world of men <laughs> yeah yeah and there's also that kind of thing in in, in in hanging man isn't there where it's robert i think who who's the half brother so it's kind of half allowed in and not half allowed not not in yeah. and you, you know that this whole kind of comes back to really back to sperm and eggs in yeah. the end yeah, 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 yeah. like this sort of connection that's that's yeah. completely genetic but yeah. but otherwise very rejected and very yeah. it's, i find it terribly interesting and, and very and I think because you've placed, it's, it's interesting that you bring up Cain and Abel because to me, what you, what you do in that play is quite primitive. Yeah. In in terms I of the so. male violent stuff, but it's set in such a rarefied environment <laughs> with you know all the suits and their kind of yeah. money. Yeah. That it's it, it's quite. This is I think what I mean by saying it's kind of horrible and ugly in, in some kind it, of weird it, way, even though it's terribly elegant and fab. Yeah. 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 Well, look, I hope because that is very much what I was trying to write about. Mm. I mean, that's what to me that the inability to to finally see and hold in words and in their kind of hearts, particularly... Oh, my God, I've forgotten all their names. I'm so sorry. That's Thomas? Them. Scott? Thomas? Thomas, yes. <laughs> Older brother. Yeah, Thomas. To hold his own sort of disappointment yeah. at himself. Yeah, and his fa- financial failure and all that. Yeah. All of those yeah. Yeah. in words is all packed around with a whole lot of incomprehensible, broken thoughts mm. and feelings. And that, to me... If you get right inside that, that is then, and because Scott is much more like accurate in mm. his thoughts, but mm. not really very accurate with him. That's very. I had a ball. For that. <laughs> but yes, it was. It was a dead-on conflict between two brothers. It seemed to me also, and, and uh, maybe I'm wrong about this, but I, I think you were living in England when you wrote it. Is that right? Or uh, around England a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. it does have a. It's got a very strong kind of. I mean, I'm not saying it's, it's it's imitative in any way, but it has a very strong kind of hair crimp vibe right. to, its, to the rhythm of its text. Yeah, and yeah. I wondered if that was something that was just in you then, or conscious or unconscious, or the the, the most conscious. Yes, it's not was not crimp for me. It was um, it Carol Churchill. Carol Churchill, yeah. You know that kind of smashing together of dialogue and yeah, I think yeah there's that a, was, lot of, a lot of I was kind like of that, yeah. really interested in that but I don't think for the same reasons that she is mm. and I've taken it into a completely different direction over the years because uh, it is to do with 
that space I think is fascinating mm. when the audience fills in, falls in, makes. Um, but yeah, I, I suppose. I mean, look, I I, I set out to write a, a play. It was a sort of task I set myself. It was to write a play. Like a proper play. Yeah, yeah. proper <laughs> play. What you'd call a well-made play. So yeah. that would be the hair thing, I suppose, because yeah. his plays are always so well-made. Um, but I don't read a lot. I mean, I, see, I read a lot more of them now, but I don't mm. really read a lot of his plays. Yeah, no, I think, I, I guess I was just wondering about just being in London at that time and <laughs> seeing stuff. And, yeah, yeah. You know, yep, it feels absolutely. like it's, it's it, as an Australian, it's just an inter- interesting observation to make as an Australian writer to, you know, if you go to another country, what might filter yes. and come? Yes, well, absolutely. That, that urge to make a play mm. came, I would imagine, came from being there. Because <laughs> you don't really get that urge here. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you broach it. There's a few in there. <laughs> there are. Um, we try to encourage them. Just, uh, just as a last thing, I, I mean, I, I suppose if I, as an artist, you know, you're a, a director, a writer, and dramaturg at least, an artistic yeah. director, mm. a filmmaker. Mm. You know, you do a lot of, a lot of different things. Yes, yeah, they're all the same thing. Though. But sh- yeah, sure. But but but. Sort of, uh, it interests me that you kind of track back and forth. Yeah. Between uh, as we've known each other a long time, you know, and you, you know, you have cycles where oh Andrew's directing, and then now cycles where oh, now Andrew's writing, and oh, Andrew's yeah. making films. You know, yeah. was there some kind of strategy about that, or do they feed each other in any way? Is there anything you can unpick from that, or is it just like here's the opportunity I'm going for it? I do, I do like following my nose. Mm. Uh, it's funny, you know, I was thinking about this last night. Um, I started writing just for. Sleep. <laughs> to to sleep. <laughs> and I think the most boring scene I've ever written. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was more notes. Yeah. And I got to this point where I was thinking, I, I'm good at letting things happen, but I'm not as good at making things happen. Yeah. And I think that would be a great next step for me yeah. as a yeah. writer. I'm really very good at letting the. I'm not intimidated by the blank page that a lot of writers say they're intimidated by. Yeah. I love starting and yeah. seeing and following my nose. And one of my favourite things was a. a Pretty sure it was Harold Pinter said he just he just he, he hears the first line mm. and he just writes. Mm. Uh, Michael Gurr is the same. It's yeah. really interesting, yeah. and I kind of do that. But I would love, oh, and I and I think in Hanging Man, and I'm sure I know for a fact in Rafa Minor because I was at the same time I was doing an adaptation of um, uh, the, the Cherry Orchard for here, and. I just was, I loved the, that sort of Chekhovian structure and I tried to kind of find how that might sit, you know, that's hence the country mansion, hence the mm. oh. um, So basically you ripped it off, you said? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything's a rip off. Um, I, I, I would love to make something happen because I mm. think that's the next the next stage and I think those, the, de- the decision to write a play is making something happen, the decision mm. to write an adaptation is letting something happen because it's kind of the path's already there, you know? Sure, So you yeah. just sort of wander and follow. And mm. So generally in my career, in my life, I've had a pool of things that I'm interested in. One thing, I'm interested in drama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and, but I've been letting it happen. And I, you know, I think here you've got to make things happen. Mm-hmm. Mm. And Well, it's a, it is a I've, magnificent opportunity to it do that, is, isn't it? to yeah. learn how to do that. Because yeah. it's, yeah. a, it's a, it's, it's, that's a different thing for her. That's a different step. Well, I, you know, it's easy to... It's not easy. It's less self-conscious mm. to flow, mm. but mm. to plan and then try and flow. That's, mm. that's fascinating. 